No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Today I'm in here with Young Bands. How you doing, bro? Doing good. What the fuck going on, Adam? Oh, I'm chilling, man. I feel like we should have got this in a long time ago when you first started cracking off, but I'm glad we, we got it one day sooner or later regardless. For sure. How you feeling? It's better now. Yeah. I'm going crazy. Do you think it's better? Why? Because you fucking couldn't have talked about shit anyway back then? Mm, I mean, I still really can't talk about certain shit and certain shit sensitive, but mm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, now yeah. just more to talk about. The whole time I've known you, it's always been like, man, Young Bands, he's, he's fire, but he can't can't leave Atlanta, can't leave the crib. Yeah, but you're out here for sure. You got a few days at least. Yeah, there's a short. She got to prove, like she got to prove. Oh, I got to prove. You got to you got to go in and like ask and shit every yeah, time you want to leave. Permission to leave this to date, this itinerary, this is what we doing. Then it's straight back home. Really? Yeah. Damn. Is that? I'm, I'm gonna be done with this shit. It's gonna be done soon. You think? Yeah. Really? I give it about. Tops, four more months. Wow, okay. Four more months. I'm not so gonna... you think, four more months? Four more months. Four more months, and then after that, you never know what happened, right? but hope for the best. There it goes. Always. Do you feel like that shit has limited you a lot over the last couple of years? It limited me a lot, but it also taught me a lot. Mm. You know, like a lot of lessons, a lot of like discipline, like just smarter, you know what I'm saying? I'm just observing everything, watching everything, using it to my advantage. Mm. I feel like a lot of niggas, they, they be out and you get so caught up in the shit that's going on around them in the scene and shit, you know? Mm. Like, I'm not a part of that. Like, I mean, I guess, because I do music and I'm an artist and people like know me and niggas, I interact with rappers sometimes, but overall, I'm not a part of no scene. I'm, I'm doing my own thing. But you might have been more part of the scene if you hadn't been limited like that. Like, you might have been out just being in L.A. all the time, fucking with the same random doing ass girls that everybody that, fucking yeah. with. Needs to be lost in the sauce. Can't do that, you know? That's what happens in rap that fucks it up, is that everybody starts fucking the same five girls once they get famous. <laughs> I gotta get one good bitch, solid bitch. You got that? Mm, yeah, for sure. Really? Okay. That's good. That's all you can hope for. How old are you these days? And damn, you really hitting the jewel 20. through the mask. <laughs> 20. I just turned 20 in May. Does this work? You're 20? That's crazy. Oh, see, just like that, huh? Yeah, 20. We were supposed to, supposed to smoke a spliff before you came in here, but then uh, I don't know what the fuck happened. Jason didn't come through with it. But you can't smoke weed. Hell no. No. It's been a while? Man, it's been years, like two years. I, I smoke a blunt. I'm going to be too high on your podcast. Yep. No, you don't want Ge that. <laughs> That's happening. We had somebody fall asleep like last week. I ain't gonna follow some many bitch yet. geeking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the boy don't have you losing your mind. Oh my god. How do you uh let's just talk about this first. How you feel now that the project is finally here? I listened to it a couple times this morning. It's fire. I feel amazing. Mm. I feel amazing. Like finally the world get to hear the shit I've been working on, the shit I've been thinking about, going through all the like but before this was a bunch of like unheard music, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And niggas got their opinions about this and their opinions about that. But now y'all hear this shit, so this is how we coming. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And we we come harder than this after, right? You know, what what made you even feel like now was the time to drop the project versus like the last couple of years? That it, it seems like it would have been a good time to drop the shit any time over the last year or two. It wasn't time because it wasn't time because the music it was always there to a certain extent, but now it's there. Like mm -hmm. now, okay, masterpiece. You get what I'm saying? I got you. I feel I feel like okay, it's the, it's the body of work is, is what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I'm finna get this shit to the world. I I really care about that shit. It's like my life, you know what I'm saying? The music shit, just like, this me. You know what I'm saying? I can't just put out anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? This is my legacy. I had to lead this to the world. If I die, if anything happened, this what, is what I left everybody with to listen to, to remember me from, to yeah. they're going to remember me from. So. That's the right mentality for sure. So so who were you before we knew about you? Who was I? Because when I found out, it obviously was from the X and Ski song. Yeah. But prior to all that, who were you as far as like where you were coming up and just as a rapper and everything? Like, what, where were you really at before that happened? And then all of a sudden, everybody was asking who you were. I'm the same nigga. I'm the same nigga. Like, me now, same me back then. Now, just people just checking for me more. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Same person. I mean, if that answers your question. Uh, no. Where, where would you like grow up and stuff? And like, how, what were you oh, doing rap wise and everything shit. before that? Uh, <laughs> we, grew, we grew up in Atlanta. I grew up in Atlanta. Me, me and all the bros, like, really, I just, I was young, like 14. I had to jump out the porch and just chase this shit all the way. Uh -huh. Give it like all the gas. Like, I just said, fuck everything else, man. Do this music shit. How long have you even been rapping before that song came out, though? What song? The, the, the X and Ski song? Yeah. I've probably been rapping like, what? How long was rapping before that shit? About two years, two years, two years, but I wasn't recording like consistently. I, you know, okay, it was like 
it was a lot of other shit going on. You were in the neighborhood. In real, yeah, it was real life shit going on. Niggas was really in the street. So I had studio time ain't free. Mm. Recording ain't free. None of this shit just easy. You get what I'm saying? Now it's easy. It's like a job. Like it's mm. all provided. If I want to record, I'm gonna record. Like you know what I'm saying? If I want to do this, I can do this. Right. Back then, I had other shit going on. But were you popping at all before that that song? To me, nah. To other people, maybe. Yeah, a few songs that were cracking off, but nothing too serious. The four tablespoons shit. Okay. You heard that? What was it? Four tablespoons. Oh, that was the song. That was my first song on SoundCloud. Oh, okay. Yeah. I forget. Like what? 2014, 2013. Like. Oh, that long ago. Long time ago. Yeah. So these so really pioneers of this shit. They okay. don't know. See, but it's different eras. I feel like a young band. It's like, it's like that era, that that stage, and then now we here. Not, I'm just glowed up. This you know is what like saying? commercial label guy, we full don't got album no, out. We don't got no label. No not, label? Not even commercial. You listen to music, it's not commercial. Okay. It's just sonically, I just work hard. I just work hard on this shit to make it sound crazy. Right. Got my own sound. Like I just meant in the sense that, like, you know, you might feel like you're doing something on SoundCloud when you're first coming out doing all that shit, but then once you actually have a real label out, like real or a real album out on on Apple Music and Spotify, and people can really get in there and shit, it's like it's, I miss it's the a different SoundCloud level. days. This shit was more simpler, like it was simpler, it was more realer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. The fans is more in tune and connected with you, and like you can feel the love a little bit more. Mm. When you get to this point, shit just get kind of real fake. And I don't know what the fuck the difference is, but it's like just because you have to pay 10 bucks a month on Apple Music or Spotify and it's like a little harder to get your shit up, it definitely does change the vibe. And remember like when Future, like Future wanted to get lit, which coincidentally Future you signed to, but remember when Future wanted to get lit so he just put his tapes on SoundCloud for free and somehow that was like a big deal and everybody was like super hyped that those were out there like that? Like it's hard to imagine anybody. It's music, like niggas, they want the music. Yeah. Overall, they want the music. Fans want the music. They getting it for free. It's like, damn, just need gifting us this music. They ain't making us pay for it. Everybody don't got money. Mm. These rappers don't even have money. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it feels <laughs> like everybody pays that 10 bucks a month now. So it's almost like Apple Music is spot- is the same shit as SoundCloud See, used Spotify to be. Spotify and Apple Music got their own fan base. Yeah, the People who can pay $10, month, $10 a month. have 10 bucks a month. There's yeah. a lot of people that are left out There's of that equation. There's a lot of people who don't get to hear that shit. There's a lot mm. of people who don't get to support that shit how they would want to. Mm. They get to hear how they get to hear it whenever it's convenient. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy how much our our judgment of the situation has changed because I like remember when X put out his first project and it was it was not on SoundCloud and everybody was acting like he was bugging, and now that's so normal. But to not put it on SoundCloud, yeah, nobody yeah. puts that shit on SoundCloud anymore. You might put one song just to promote it. But Everybody gonna suggest that like distribution companies, labels, mm. bro, because they want they, they want the money. Yeah. Don't put that on SoundCloud, like bro. You gotta get these streams going crazy, da da da. Right. That kind of thing. They're but trying really, to make like back that money. the reason I put that shit on SoundCloud. Because, nigga, that's where we started. Your project's on there, too? I just put it up. I told oh, Jake, shit, you know, okay. put this shit on SoundCloud. Nice. For the fans, like, I miss the SoundCloud days. I'm not going to lie to you. The, the, the iTunes shit, we climbing the charts. Mm. I'm just, I just passed Taylor Swift. You know what I'm saying? That shit big. Yep. But, nigga, I also, like, I still want to be tapped in with my fans. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want my fans who can't hear it that, that way, but still be able to hear that shit, still be able to, like, listen to this music, because it's really for them. Yeah. All these new niggas who just ride the wave, be bandwagon and shit. That shit lame. Yeah, all the samples and shit too. That like a lot of that original SoundCloud shit would not have just been able to be up on Spotify and Apple Music because it had random ass samples and shit. Yeah. What? So I'm going crazy there, clear it though. Okay, so how did that X song happen? I love when they run. Yeah, because that's when I first really started to be like, all right, who is this dude? So basically, X, Ski Mask, they're from Florida, from Miami, and we was in Atlanta. I got booked for my first show off of the Four Tablespoons song. Okay. So Rojas. You know Rojas? Yeah. Rojas hit me up and he like, bro, we trying to book you in Miami for this show um, with 21 Savage. That shit with 21 Savage, wasn't it? 21 Savage. X and Ski was on the lineup. So it was 21 Savage, me, then X, and then Ski. Okay. Because back then, I had a little bit more steam than them. Right. Because we been doing the SoundCloud shit. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Basically, X and Ski reached out on Twitter like, yo, your music fire as fuck, bro. When you come down here, let's link. Oh, nice. We turned up with you on stage at the show, like, you know, Vince, come down here, you know what I'm saying? We came down there. I swear to God, I, 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 like, it was literally on, like, 20 people at this show. <laughs> 21 Savage X and Young Ben, it was, like, 20 people in but the crowd. But it's crap. still so early for 21, even. Early. That right? was before 21 really he got popping, too. He wasn't nobody, I think. What, yeah. he had a, what, he had a skirt, skirt? Yeah. <laughs> Something. 
There's like 20 people in the crowd. No, because I remember seeing 21. Not Ops, yeah, because Red Ops when he blew up. 21 came to L.A. and played some shows like at least a year after that. And the shows were like, and like starting to maybe have like a couple hundred people. But even then, like a year after that, 21 was still not that lit. So that was like crazy early 21 and young bands and everything. Yeah, everybody. Legendary shit. Niggas don't even know about that. That's crazy. But basically, we on stage. And it's like my first show. Literally, it's my first show. Uh-huh. Nigga, X, he been real like, he just outgoing. He just like, everybody come, come get, come cause to the fucking front. Turn up for my brother Young Benz. Everybody come to the fucking front and turn up. You know, yeah. turn up. Like, he on some crazy shit. <laughs> so then uh, everybody came to the front. Turn. Like, we performed all together. Like, we just performed like, like they was with us. Like, gang, family. We just all performed. Yeah. After that, but my manager, um, Rick. My manager, um, he got locked up. So we drove out to, we was driving out to a show in Texas. The car flipped. Both cars flipped. Some crazy shit. Like, both cars flipped. And then, um, hey, what they was trying to say? I had some shit in the car. They had some shit in the car. So we were in Texas, a racist ass county. They locked Rick up in the other whole car. So Rick holding all the money. Niggas ain't even had no money. Rick, Rick really been hustling, having, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's my big bro, so he just had shit under control. Mm-hmm. He had all the cash. They locked this man up. So we had Rich with us. That was my uh a nigga I used to fuck with, his partner. He was like the DJ for uh-huh. that for that for that particular moment. He basically made it so we just got able to make it to Miami. So we made our flights. The car flipped, the bitch in Texas picked us up. We hit the airport, went to Miami. After the show, X and Ski just showed so much love, bro. Like really? so much love. Like we ain't had shit. We didn't know where we was gonna go. Rojas was like, bro. Like bands and them, like you know what I'm saying, and then extra ski base, like well, we got a hotel, we are gonna get y'all a hotel, um, until y'all can find a way to get y'all flights back. Y'all can stay at some like the member only, members only, niggas crib. At the porn mansion? No, nah, no, we ain't stay at no. the porn mansion. <laughs> niggas kept saying go, gotta go to Bruno's, gotta go to Bruno's, bands, let's go to Bruno's. You might never leave. <laughs> there might be a young bands porno floating around if you had done that. Nah, I fought with Bruno. I just met Bruno the first time in Miami, but uh-huh. um, so yeah, we, we was out there with them. For like a minute, we was out there for like. I think we was out there a week, <laughs> stranded, <laughs> stranded for like a week in Miami. Um, me, Trap Trail, and this other nigga, and um, they just showing love. Basically, we got in the studio. We got in the studio one of them days, and we made that shit. We just mm-hmm. made that shit. Like we sat in the studio, a little room, like up to my room. It's biggest, like you see where that right. corner at. To that light, to this wall, mm-hmm. to this wall. Minimalist shit. Bro, mic like this in the closet. So like this the closet, you gonna cut it in half. Mm-hmm. Ten niggas in there, we hot as fuck, sweating. <laughs> Nigga X pulled a beat up. He already got a rope, he just going crazy, you know what I'm saying? He like, Bans, once you get on this? Ski, get on this. So, you know, Ski make his verse. X lay his shit down. I come in, I had second verse, I know. Yeah, second verse. Right. I go in, I go in the closet. You know, I freestyle, freestyle that shit. Like, it was just crazy. That's fucking crazy. It didn't feel like it was that big of a, a, a song or anything? You didn't know it was going to go on to... Sometimes you could just feel the energy. Like, mm. me being me, like, the way I feel about energy and shit. Back then, I didn't even know, like, what I was manifesting, like, what, like, all the shit I'm feeling because I'm so young. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, whoever this nigga is, he got it. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? Like, he got it. Like, he owned some shit. That's interesting too, though, because you know, like Broward County energy of like the energy that those fools were putting off at the time versus like the average young dude that I meet from Atlanta. Like, average dude I meet from Atlanta is like very chill, low key, like doesn't talk like all crazy and shit because it's very like, you know, sort of street oriented type energy. And then you look at them two and they were just wild as fuck screaming. And you heard in the music and shit too that they were just like crazy energetic. Uh, that, that's like the first step to having this shit. You doing the fuck you want to do. Mm. That's, how, that's how you nigga really expressing himself early with this music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I came in the game, I'm expressing myself, but not as much as I'm expressing myself in this music. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Nigga off gate expressing himself, screaming on songs, <laughs> like just rapping about crazy shit. Like, nigga, real like legend, like legend. That's wild. Legend for real. And so, to see, see him be the, as big as he is. It's just crazy. So you see your career just start blowing up. Your name just got way bigger like pretty soon after that. Nah, because really, I, I, I will honestly say, I was bigger than X at that very moment in mm-hmm. time. So X, if you look, you can find all the tweets. He was just showing me a lot of love, like, yo, thank you, bro. And look at me, he shouted me out and look at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Because yeah. of that, Shout you know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. yeah. Because of that, like, 
Cause I showed him love early. Like, Uno and Fani came to the studio and them niggas like, no, they cool, they cool now, we cool now. They were just acting kind of weird. Cause you know, they Cardi was going, Cardi was up back then. So mm -hmm. that's when Cardi was like, ahead of the SoundCloud way. Right. You know what I'm saying? And niggas was just acting funny like they with Cardi, you know what I'm saying? We, niggas just, so shit. You know, they came to the studio, they sat down. It's me, X, Ski, Uno, Fani, they just left. Like niggas <laughs> sat down. How that room? They said, "Oh, yeah, how they fucking here?" And then got up and left on some like other shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. And I know these niggas. Like we, we grew up around these niggas. We know these niggas. My, I, my first song with Cardi. I got right. another song with Uno. But yeah. that might be you now. If somebody was trying to get you to hop in the studio and it was hot as fuck in there. You if might I be, fuck with you, eh. if I fuck with you in this love, and we gonna record, we gonna rock out. This rock star shit. This shit can't change me. Just you know what I'm saying? Just cause I got money, or I can be comfortable at home, nigga. We living life, we having fun. You know what I'm saying? If I support you and you you ain't in the big studio and you in your closet and I mm. pull up, we gonna record. Yeah. It's crazy though, because nowadays it's like at that time, people like y'all could have been out there just making music and shit and there weren't labels calling. Whereas now, when as soon as a dude starts to get hot, the labels are on them. Like before they're even able to really have that like underground phase of their career and shit. It's crazy. I I, I rap game changing. Right mm -hmm. before our eyes, like the whole music shit's changing right before our eyes. Like nowadays, I feel like everybody just shit oversaturated as fuck, mm -hmm. and niggas can't even decipher real talent and real niggas from all this clout shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And people, people are so quick. Like people just, I feel like people they they like what other people like. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's all about a bandwagon and following the trend. Nigga could be the assest shit in the world. But it just say some funny shit in the song, some stupid shit. Mm. And the whole world gonna like gas it up. You know what I'm saying? When you got real talented artists coming out of this shit, like niggas making timeless music that's gonna inspire people, mm. help people mentally, you know what I'm saying? Emotionally. They ignoring it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not what's cool right now. It's this whole clout wave. Yeah, it's almost like Spotify and Apple Music and YouTube and all this shit, like None of that shit was established the same way it is now. And at that time, when y'all were coming out and shit, it did feel like there was a different shit going on in the sense that like everybody was really excited about finding out about all the new young artists. Back then, it wasn't that many. It wasn't yeah. that many of us. Like niggas, like niggas like me, niggas like Cardi, niggas like Key, um, the first niggas. Who else? Who else pioneering this real like new wave of sound, this SoundCloud shit? Then who opened the door? Cardi. Heard Cardi a couple he, times. He definitely, Key opened the door for a lot of niggas. Like, Key opened the door for 21 to me. Mm, he did. Key opened the door, you know what I'm saying? Key's ridiculous. That 777 Project I listened to. Niggas sleep a on it. A thousand times. Niggas sleep on it. Key mm. is a fucking legend. If you actually look at like the numbers on. that his shit does, it's like, it's just not fair. It's not right. Like, why is his shit not as popping as it should be? I don't I know if he's thinking he, the same shit. He don't got enough face tags. I basically just really like summed it all up. You know what I'm saying? That's why. Mm. That's why. That's why shit fucked up, but. It'll be over with soon. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Real shit, gonna, real shit gonna last. How'd you meet Future and, and what's that relationship about? Um, shit, nigga. It's big, bro. Nigga's just like, I met him. I met him through, um, let's say, through, I met him through a lot of ways, through a couple of ways. A couple of people was trying to, like, put it, you know, together, like, yo, band's like the next one. Uh -huh. Yeah, I gotta, like, fuck, you gotta fuck with him type shit. But Scooter, I made a song called Young Scooter. That's how you met him? That's what I always wondered. Yeah, I made a song called Young Scooter because Young Scooter really like one of my favorite rappers. Same. Young Scooter, one of my all-time favorites and said that he's down to do the interview when he's out here, so. Got to, man. It's like, it's like growing up, nigga really like drug finessing, like down bagging out the mud. Like that's real struggle music. Mm. So when I listen to Young Scooter, that shit just speaks to my soul. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? That shit just give me hope. Like, get out of that shit really was giving me hope back then. So that's just like my favorite rapper. So you made that I, song. I made the song like we get into it. I feel like Young Scooter. Everybody tag Young Scooter. You know what I'm saying? Right. So Scooter hit me up. He was fucking with it. But I ain't hit him up like, hey, I'm trying to be this, that. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Which is like, appreciate the love, bro. Like that crazy. Then um, who was funny? Original funny. You know, uh -huh. you know funny. Thousand band funny or no, you got another funny? funny. Who's he that? Made, he made the fandanas with the S on it. No, I don't know. Bro, he like Atlanta legend when it comes out. And you seen him. Like, okay. You seen him definitely. Seen him. I really will show you. But basically, Fani, um, back then, me and Fani was like just doing a lot of shit. Like, I was doing shooting for his brand. We was talking a lot. I was sending him back and forth songs and shit. Like, you know, because he was like really just being a bit role. Like, oh, you finna go up, bro. Like, I fuck with the music, whatever. 
he had a connection with Scooter and Ebony as one of Future's managers. Okay. Like, um, they was in the studio, Cam Kirk studio, finally told me. Scooter was doing a photo shoot. Ebony was there. He played my song for Scooter. Like, you know, the young nigga you was fucking with, Bass, this is music, bro. Like, bro, you need to, you need to fuck with him. Like, I need to fuck with him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I guess that another person, another way. Um, then one day I'm out. I'm out. Um, and nigga Perry, we was, we was somewhere. And then like a little bar or something, get some Mexican food there late at night. And nigga Future, and Scooter just called me. Future's like, bro, like, bro, whatever you need, whatever you want to do, bro, like, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just want you to be game, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? Type shit. And it's like, he fucking with the shit. He fucking with the movement. He fucking mm-hmm. with me. There you go. And now we got that shit going. That's crazy. Were you actually in the studio with him for the, the collab that you have on the tape? On the project that you just put out? Oh, yeah. Uh-uh. Okay. The whole project, but the way this shit was orchestrated, it's like crazy. Why? Because you weren't this really able to be in over the... the span of like two years. You weren't able to be in the studio with everybody that often because of your situation? I come, I come, I come sometimes. Mm. Sometimes I pull up to the studio if I can, you know what I'm saying, but... Are you just bored as fuck in the house because you've been in the house for years? No, um, we lit every day. <laughs> <laughs> you managed to make fun? I make fun, fun out of it? Bro, this is my life. I don't know nothing else. I can't remember. You know what I'm saying? I can't even remember what it's like to literally be like a f- like free. Like mm. free. Like literally right now I could get up, walk out of this interview and go take a flight to Africa. You, you can't even saying? imagine what it would be like to be what able to like, just like, do that shit. Like wake up and just be like, shit, bro, what y'all niggas want to do? Let's go anywhere in the whole world. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be kind of overwhelming if and when you do get to that point, huh? Nah, I'm ready. <laughs> my fourth year. Ready to live? I'm ready to live, bro. Like, I'm ready to live. Like I got all this shit, all these fans, all these shows. You know what I'm saying? Like Life is shit really is, is, is doing. I'm, you know what I'm, I'm doing? I'm, we doing it. Yeah. We did it. You know what I'm saying? Have you had to cancel tours because of this shit? I saw somebody time. complaining about People that. People invited me to headline tours with them. Mm. Can't go. Big money. Like, oh, bro, you can make this much amount of money on this huge tour. Can't do it. Damn. You know, can't do it. That's crazy. But, you know, I don't, I don't never... I don't never think of it as a bad thing. Or like, I mean, you're only 20. It's not a bad thing, bro. Like, if, if it doesn't happen, it just wasn't meant. What's mine gonna come? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This shit destined. I'm gonna be where I need to be. Do you feel though like you have like a sentence hanging over your head? Like there's a chance that you might just get locked up and that all this is just gonna like do you live in fear of that? I don't live in fear of nothing but God, but really, nah, because it's all up to me. It's all up to me. Now if if I if I was to just crash out, just start crashing out and just say I commit another crime, I just go out, shoot a nigga in LA or some crazy shit. Hell yeah, I'm going to jail for life. Uh-huh. Let me get a, they're gonna give me an L. Um, other than that, God got me. You know what I'm saying? Like, can't nothing go wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really like living fear of no sentence hanging on my head because for me to get this far, can't just, you know, for mm-hmm. what? I know God got a whole plan for me, a whole a whole bunch of shit that's gonna happen. Definitely. This not the this not the end, it's the beginning. You do, know what I'm saying? do you have the X verse on that song that isn't actually on the album? Does I'm this, not ready to say go. So the verse this, exists, or could you just not get it from the label? It's not a verse. See, really, we just created a timeless song. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you listen to the hook in the second half, he's singing on the hook, mm-hmm. ready, set, go. With okay. Me. Nowadays, I feel like people like you expect a song to be like exactly the way that you envisioned it, bro. It don't right. gotta be that. He has to have a verse you know in a lot of people's minds. Yeah, it gotta have a verse that it don't, bro. Like this is what X left us with. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is what he left me with. Like you heard, you heard the funk, bro. Like, can't wait to get on this song. I'm on this song, bro. This shit crazy. Da, da, da. And this is what he left us with. You know what I'm saying? This is what I this, and I, I made a beautiful masterpiece out of it. Yeah. For the fans. So for niggas to hate and and, and come at me like on some on some bullshit, it's like what like what do y'all want, y'all want me to keep it? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all don't want me to use it at all. Like y'all not want to hear it. You feel me? Right. They don't appreciate it. It's disrespectful. I feel right. like it's disrespectful to really X and me and the music overall. Like y'all niggas like. We doing this for y'all. I put this together for y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Made it work out. Mm. So y'all can hear X. Definitely. Uh, but do you know Greedo? Yeah, we was in the studio and made that song. Oh, for real? Yeah. In Atlanta or here? LA. Wow. What was that energy like between y'all? Crazy. Real nigga. 
you meet another real nigga is like it's a good feeling mm. he's a wild man it's like what version of Greedo did you get because you could get turned up chilling, Greedo, you chilling get... like bro he <laughs> came in and I feel like a lot of the older older artists and shit like real niggas they're like oh yeah he go, he got it so he just instantly tried to like like bro this song hard as hell he seen what I was trying to do he was like trying to guide me a little bit with you know what I'm saying like using that was my first time using autotune really so ready set go it's such a legendary song to me. That was my first, like, song where I say I'm finna push the boundaries with my sound. Uh-huh. You know, like, before that, you know the old bands, Money So Long bands, like, yeah. bands, like, all that shit, like, I'm rapping. It's just straight rap. It's not even that melodic. This shit, that day, literally, I'm, I'm like, I know I'm talented as fuck. I know I can do anything I put my mind to musically. Uh-huh. Today, I'm not, I'm not finna hold back nothing. I'm finna get in the studio. I'm finna just go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. However, 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 like I'm finna make that shit happen. 